Welcome to another scriptural study. In fact, another scriptural empirical calendar and scriptural word study. So welcome aboard because we, together as one, are going to explore the question, why did the Catholic Church omit the full moon as new moon? Yes, as everyone knows that have observed and or have checked into the scriptural studies on this particular YouTube channel, we believe fully from scriptural discernment that the Catholic Church is indeed the second Babylon, as we can read in 1 Kepha or Peter chapter 5 verse 13. We also firmly believe without doubt from the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 25, the second Babylon speaks words against the Most High, and it wears out the set-apart ones of the Most High as well. And it intends to change appointed times and law. It has bad intentions, not good intentions from a scriptural standpoint. So we also believe the second Babylon intended to change appointed times and law all through time. So let's talk about that in this scriptural study. Remember, Pope Gregory from the Catholic Church today and his symbol, his logo, is fashioned after the great red dragon in Hazan or Revelation chapter 12 verses 3 and verse 9. So, in this study, once again, we're going to allow scripture to interpret scripture, not my opinion, not any man's opinion and or woman's opinion. Remember, iron sharpening iron is the word verifying the word, scripture interpreting scripture. And this is what is called exegesis, which is the exposition or explanation of a text based on a careful objective analysis. The word exegesis literally means to lead out of, to come out of this world. That means the interpreter is led to his or her own conclusions by following the scriptural text. Think of it this way. We go to the book of John, or Yahukun, in chapter 16, verse 13. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he shall guide you into all the truth. For he shall not speak from himself, but whatever he hears, he shall speak, and he shall announce to you what is to come. Remember, line upon line, here a little, there a little, is what is known as the exegesis approach. And we have a scriptural proposed study format that fights the good fight. It allows us to eliminate as best we can any form of cognitive dissonance and more importantly and even worse, cognitive bias. So this is the approach in this scriptural study. Again, exegesis, rather than what is known as the sha-sha to lead astray or sha ah approach to be smeared over and blighted, which is known as eisegesis, which is the opposite approach of the exegesis format, which the interpretation of scripture is based on a subjective approach, making it mean whatever the interpret interpreter wants it to mean. And this is where the birth of cognitive dissonance originates and then forms into something even worse, which is cognitive bias. And it's what we call the yabba dabba do Hebrew free-for-all crew. It still exists, and it proclaims itself to be in the inner secret sanctum, just like the second Babylon and their coat of arms with the red dragon, as they are an envoy to the United Nations. It's a just and disprove approach. Again, none of us were ever obligated to be a Nimrod, let alone obligated to follow a Nimrod. I'm not trying to be rude, but all through time, Babylon has ensured its intentions to change times and laws. And if you look at the whole timeline with the seven heads and ten toes where we are today, you'll understand why this historical shasha approach has existed. Regardless of whatever historical uh, timeline as Bereans you are utilizing, we utilize more than one 
This is just one of them in regards to proposing the prophetic Babylon and the successive reigns of Gentile kingdoms who have intended consciously to change the very first page of Scripture and thus change times and law. Again, remember, Babylon has an inner secret sanctum, a place where only they can interpret Scripture. Remember, the second Babylon is the permanent observer mission of the Holy See to the United Nations. We'll be right back on this later on in the scriptural study. So again, why did the Catholic Church omit the full moon as new moon? What a question. Is it true? Well, let's explore it. We have three topics in this scriptural study. And we'll go, we'll go to the first one and do a basic scriptural word study on the word omit. The word omit is a transitive verb, which is a verb that requires an object to receive the action. In this case, full moon is the object, and it was omitted, removed. The definition of the word om omit is to leave out or exclude someone or something, in this case, the full moon, either intentionally or forgetfully. And in this study, we'll share why it was intentional, intended to change times and law. So, again, very basic definition, and it comes with two basic instructions when it comes to allowing Scripture to interpret Scripture. Do not omit anything. Notice, do not remove. Danger, do not remove. And again, we allow Scripture to interpret Scripture, which brings us to the word in Scripture for omit, which is take away. And we can find this word in the book of Dabarim, or Deuteronomy, chapter 12, verse 32. And I quote, All the words I am commanding you, guard to do it. Do not add to it, nor take away, or omit from it. Do not remove. Very basic. This word take away we can find in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance and is known as the Hebraic or ancient scriptural word as gara. Gara, to diminish, restrain, withdraw. Strong's H1639. Of course, this is verified as well in the very same definition and or manner from the Brown Driver Briggs Hebrew English lexicon. Gara, to diminish, restrain, withdraw, to keep back, to abate, do away with, take away from, to clip. If we go further with the NASB Exhaustive Concordance translation, it shows us to omit deducted, cut short, cut off, hinder, limit, reduce, take away. So the dictionary definitions are all in line or in alignment. If you go to the theological word book of this word take away in scripture, entry 384, Gara, page 173, again, clip, diminish, restrain, take from, withdraw, abate, do away with, keep back. And if you look for other words in Scripture, again, Scripture interpreting Scripture, we come to the prophet Yirmiyahu, or Jeremiah chapter 26, verse 2, and I quote, Thus said Yahuwah, stand in the courtyard of the house of Yahuwah, and speak to all the cities of Yahuda, which come to bow themselves in the house of Yahuwah. All the words that I can uh, command you to speak to them do not diminish, and this word is omit, do not omit a word. So if you go to Yirmiyahu chapter 26, verse 2, and all other translations, again, part of the proposed scriptural study format is not to utilize only one translation. Use all of them. Learn. Find out. It doesn't hurt. So for Yirmiyahu chapter 26, verse 2, do not omit a word. New International Version. Berean Standard Bible, do not omit a word. New American Standard Bible, do not omit a word. Word English Bible, don't omit a word. So, if you're interested 
in regards to flushing out truth, having the spirit of truth, combating the spirit of error of cognitive distance that leads to something worse, which is cognitive bias, these 12 questions in a word study, let alone name studies or any topical scriptural study, is very helpful to combat that. And one of those tips is to use dictionaries and all scriptural translations. It combats what we call, what is the mystery of the yabba dabba do Hebrew movement? It's doo-doo. It's poop. It's based on objective, non-objective, emotional, let alone subjective feelings. It tickles the ears. This is why we did this scriptural study. And most people have fallen for the Shah movement in a very, very disappointing manner. And we did as well at one time. So this is why we are so steadfast with the proposed scriptural study format. It basically combats people that want to tickle the ears. It exposes self-proclaimed teachers, whether they're conscious of it or not. So again, what is the mystery of Yabba Dabba Do Hebrew? And it usually comes with a free-for-all movement that'll claim personally or as a group that only they can interpret scripture like the Holy See of the Second Babylon, the Roman Catholic Church. Again, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, their subjective emotions, shall they heap themselves up teachers having itching ears. So again, synonyms for omit, words like take away, leave out, extinguish, do away with, get rid of, exclude, eliminate, and on and on it goes. So when you're looking at the book of Deuteronomy, or Dabarim, the word, take away, it is the word omit. So we have established that. But have you also noticed that those who have a ten tendency to omit from the word, from scripture, also add to the word? So they'll take away something or omit it, eliminate it, and then they'll add their own flair. So why does this happen? So remember, Scripture says, do not add to his words or take away, lest he reprove you, Yahuwah, the Father of lights, the only self-existent one, and you will be found a liar. So again, have you also noticed that those who have a tendency to omit from the word also add to the word? So again, Kadash means to be set apart, separated from the world. Some people that had their lusts, their passions to add Shah, Shah doesn't mean salvation, they utilized a word called Kadusha, which is a temple prostitute. This is what we are combating. It's nothing personal, it's very easy to combat, and you allow scripture to interpret scripture. Again, do not add or take away. So this is why the exegesis approach is so effective at combating people with cognitive bias that get up every day and jest and disprove Scripture rather than testing and proving Scripture, allowing Scripture to interpret Scripture. Again, Shah Shah means to lead astray. Shah ah means to be smeared over and blinded. Shah does not mean deliverance on its own or salvation in any shape, form, or or manner. Again, Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 32. Do not add to it, nor take away. Do not omit. Do not omit a word, as the prophet Yirmiyahu shared as well. This is serious stuff. Right down to the book of Revelation, known as Hazan. Some people spell it with a C-H. Still gives you the ha, not the ka. Hazan, or Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 through 19. And I quote, For I witness to everyone hearing the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, and usually, again, people that omit stuff, they'll make something up. They'll add something. The Almighty Yahuwah shall add to them, to, or him or her, the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, the Almighty Yahuwah shall take away his part from the book of life, and out of the set-apart city, which are written in this book. Serious stuff. 
So that's the first category. A little study, there's far more, from an etymological standpoint, on the word, scriptural word omit. Let's go now to, now that we know what the word omit means in its relationship in scripture, how was the full moon scripturally omitted as new moon? Well, again, the second Babylon speaks words against the Most High. Remember, they've eliminated the Father's name. And in some denominations through Catholicism that has poured down, yes, this mother church into all other churches on earth, you can't even say the word hallelujah. You can't even sing it. So again, it speaks words against the Most High and wears out the set-apart ones of the Most High. It's eliminated the name. It's omitted the Father's name. It's omitted the Son's name. And furthermore, it intends to change appointed times and law. Well, the moon is for appointed times. And the sun knows its entry point. Mabo. So, not good intentions at all, this second Babylon. It is the great red dragon. The coat of arms from Pope Gregory uh, shares that explicitly. This is the wonderful value of an exegesis approach as compared to an eisegesis approach. Remember, the Yabba Dabba Do Hebrew movement that exists today is just following the steps of the second Babylon. They intend to change appointed times and law. This is again why we utilize a proposed scriptural study format to combat the tickling of ears, exposing self-proclaimed teachers. More on this in a second. So again, the second Babylon speaks words against the Most High, and it wears out the set-apart ones of the Most High, and it intends to change appointed times and law. Well, how does the Catholic Church omit the full moon as new moon? How do they take away the full moon as being new moon? How do they do this? How did they do this? Well, go to the Catholic translations in Tehillim, which means praises, now known today as the book of Psalms, or Psalm 81, verse 3. So these are Catholic translations. I give you two witnesses. The Douai Rheims Bible, blow up the trumpet at the new moon on the noted day of your solemnity. Sorry. Catholic public domain version, sound the trumpet at the new moon on the noteworthy day of your solemnity. Okay, so there are two Catholic translations. Where's the full moon? It's omitted. How do we know this? Well, again, if you follow basic scriptural studies with the format and go to a literal translation, Smith's literal translation is quoted as saying, strike ye the trumpet in the new moon in the full moon. Yes, the first day of the seventh month is Yom Teruah for the day of our festival. Catholic versions have eliminated this, omitted them. The full moon. There it is right there. It's toast. It's gone. Well, do we have more evidence? Modern translations. Stop the video. Look at the NIV, the New Living Translation, English Standard Version, Brian Study Bible, New American Study Bible, NASAB 1995, NASB 1977. Sound the ram's horn at the new moon when the moon is full on the day of our festival, Yom Teruah. Trumpets. First day, seventh month. More modern translations. Stop the video now. Amplified Bible, Christian Standard Bible, Holman Christian Standard Bible, contemporary, contemporary English version, Good News Translation, God's Word Translation. Regrettably, some of these obviously are not defined properly. International Standard Version, Net Bible. All full moon when the festival of Yom Teruah begins. Catholic Church omitted it. Why? Classic translations. New King James. New Heart. English Bible. Word English Bible. American Standard Version. The Faithful Version. English Revised Version. Blow the trumpet in the new moon at the full moon on our solemn feast day. Yes, Yom Teruah. Trumpets is indeed a solemn feast day. Translations from the Aramaic, from the Peshitta, Holy Bible translated, call with the trumpets at the first of the month and at full moon on feast days. Yes, 
Yeshayahu or the prophet Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 23. From new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all shall come and worship Yahuwah. So again, at the end of the day, this is being omitted from the Catholic Church. Take a look at Ben Midbar, the book of Numbers, chapter 29, verse 1. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you have a set apart gathering. It matches Psalm 81, verse 3. This is not rocket science. The approach of exegesis allowing scripture to interpret scripture is extremely value added. Old Testament translations, JPS Tanik, 1917, blow the horn at the new moon, at the full moon, for our feast day, Yom Teruah, trumpets. First day of the seventh month. But what is the Catholic Church with their red coat of arms? They omit it. They do not want you to know each and every new moon day. They don't want you to know when trumpets is. Why? They intend to change appointed times and law. That's their job. And they do it extremely well all through time. And the second Babylon has mastered it. Again, you are not obligated to follow a Nimrod. You do not have to act like a Nimrod. You do not have to speak words against the Most High meaning you don't have to wear out the set-apart ones of the Most High with incorrect titles such as Lord, God. At the end of the day, the Almighty Father, Yahuwah, His name means I am He who is self-existent. But this second Babylon intends to change appointed times and law. Remember, the moon is for appointed times. That's scripture. But if you omit the full moon as new moon, you succeed. So, again, the same question. Have you also noticed that those who have a tendency to omit from the word also add to the word? Well, what did the Catholic Church add? Even though they know scripturally they're not supposed to. Well, this second Babylon omitted the full moon as new moon, and what did they replace it with? With the intent to change appointed times in law. What did they do? Well, the crescent moon. If we go back to the first Babylon, we will find in history with the archaeological evidence, as Mashiach Yahushua said, the son, the firstborn of all creation, the stones would cry out. So in this Babylonian tablet, King Meleshapak presents his daughter to the goddess Nananya, the crescent moon, which represents the god Sin, the sun, the Shamash, and the star goddess Ishtar. First Babylon acts like the second Babylon. Shamash, Arcadian, Sumerian, Utu, and Mesopotamian religion, the god of the sun, who, with the crescent moon god, Sin, Sumerian, known as Nana, and Ishtar, Sumerian, Inanna, the goddess of Venus, was part of the an astral triad of divinities. Ooh, the trinity. Oh, have you fallen from the heavens, O Halal, son of the morning. You've been cut down to the ground, you who laid low the Gentiles. Gentile nations. We'll talk about more of who these Gentile nations are now. Uh, a little further, Shemesh was the son of Sin. We are to come out of all of this. The stones cry out now, don't they? Again, the second Babylon is doing its job as it's designed to do. It intends to change appointed times and law. It omitted the full moon as new moon. And it added the crescent with Mary the sun disk and the crescent moon. This is a Roman Catholic altar. It's Babylonian. Understand who Semiramis was and Tammuz and who Nimrod was. Remember the coat of arms of Pope Gregory, the red dragon, the great red dragon. Islam with their crescent moon, the symbol with the sun setting in the west. Or worse yet, Judaism, 
blowing the shofar at the crescent moon at sunset. The crescent moon is mentioned four times in scripture, and each time it's associated to death and hooring. So all through time, Babel, the land of confusion, has been extremely effective. Again, the second Babylon is an offshoot of the first Babylon, and it speaks words against the Most High, and it wears out the set-apart ones of the Most High, and it intends to change appointed times and law. It's got bad intentions. Very easy to prove. Again, Hazan, or Revelation chapter 13, verse 3, and I quote, And all the earth marveled after this beast. Remember, all the nations of the world, except for five, use the Gregorian calendar. This includes 195 recognized countries, as well as up to two dozen unrecognized countries. The countries that do not use the Gregorian calendar include Afghanistan, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Ethiopia, and Nepal. But for business, even these five countries utilize the Gregorian. And all the earth marveled after the beast. So not only did the Catholic Church omit the full moon as new moon, it omitted a few other things. Remember, timekeeping is the action or process of recording how long something takes. No one in a million years, with a human wristwatch, would even suggest taking away the second hand, omitting it, let alone the minute hand, omitting it, or even the hour hand. We use all three witnesses to tell time, to meet our scheduled appointments. So why would any world religion, let alone the second Babylon, let you know that you can omit anything from the three witnesses in Scripture? The sun, moon, and stars were for days, years, and appointed times. The moon is for appointed times. Each and every new moon day where we blow the shofar, just as scripture stated. Remember, the heavens are proclaiming the esteem of the Almighty, who are Father of Lights. And the expanse is declaring the work of His hand. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. We don't look at the whole face of the clock anymore. We do not utilize all three witnesses due to the second Babylon. And this is why Zechariah the prophet in chapter 8 verse 7 stated, Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, See, I am saving or delivering my people from the land of sunrise and the land of sunset. Egypt had a sunrise day start. The Babylonians had a sunset day start, both of which are non-scriptural. We know this because even today, Shamash in historical and archaeological times with evidence, Shamash, the Babylonian sunrise god, was believed to travel through the underworld as he journeyed to the east in preparation for the sunrise. Again, everything from Babylon is corrupted. We do not have to be following a Nimrod. So, Come out of her, my people. Come out of Babel, the land of confusion. Come out of world religions. Come out of the coat of arms. And this is why we stated we would come back to this. Understand who prophetic Babylon is all the way up to the second Babylon. Understand why we are here right now. Ten toes on two feet of iron mixed with ceramic clay. Understand why the Catholic Church, the Holy See, continues to state that they're the only ones that can interpret Scripture. Understand why the Roman Catholic Church is the permanent observer and mission of the Holy See to the United Nations, the Gentile kingdoms. They've been the envoy all through time for the successive reigns of Gentile kingdoms. Yes, all through time, Babylon has intended to change appointed times and law. And they have been successful with a very basic approach. They claim they're the only ones that can interpret scripture because they have a secret sanctum that they can go to. And this approach has been absorbed by individuals, let alone groups, believe it or not, in all world religions, and even more fascinating, the Hebrew Roots Movement, and why we call it the Yabba Dabba Doo Hebrew Doo Doo Movement. It's poo-poo. Again, 
Babylon is the permanent observer mission of the Holy See to the United Nations, let alone all through time, the successive reigns of Gentile kingdoms. Very easy to prove. So, how was the full moon scripturally omitted as new moon? It was eliminated, omitted from the scriptures as we've just shared. But the bigger question is, what, is, uh, what else is being omitted or eliminated? Well, the very first page of scripture, of course. Out of the total countries on earth today that all utilize the Gregorian calendar, the very first page of scripture is being omitted. All three witnesses. No one omits the three witnesses on a wristwatch or a wall clock that hangs on a wall. But the entire earth, 8.3 billion people here and now, ignore the very first page. They omit it. Three witnesses are to be utilized to number our days. Sun, moon, and stars. So for all the folks out there that say they're a solar-only model, no such thing. For all the folks out there that say there's a lunar Sabbath model only, no such thing. It's all three witnesses, sun, moon, and stars, and the full moon is for appointed times, which the Roman Catholic Church has successfully omitted. Remember, some of you out there that say uh, the word moon means month. Wait a minute. It's not sun, Catholic month, and stars. It's sun, moon, and stars. And if you know anything astronomically, the full moon is the only moon that you can actually witness and or observe. It's the only moon phase that rules the whole night through with the stars. Psalm 136, verse 9, Hanok chapter 78, on and on it goes. This is kindergarten astronomy. You don't have to support a Nimrod from the Catholic Church. What else has been eliminated or omitted? The scriptural stars. Again, the moon and stars to rule by night. It's not the month and stars to rule by night. So some of you that are omitting using basic dictionaries, concordances, etc. Think about what you're doing. You're taking away and then adding your own flair. You're acting like a nimrod. You're omitting Yahoo is kindness, which is everlasting. So don't omit these stars. You're omitting, eliminating a true scriptural day start, which is the dawn. Stop the video now. Check these three old covenant witnesses. Check these renewed covenant witnesses. Check the witnesses from what the taught ones did. Remember, our Mashiach Yahushua, the firstborn of all creation, the sun started his day at dawn. First light. Again, we give thanks to Yahuwah, our Father of Lights, because we are awesomely made and wondrously made. Wondrous are the works of Yahuwah, our Father of Lights, and our being knows it well. We can measure this with our own fingers and hands. We don't even need a telescope or binoculars. All of these scriptural stars are within the magnitude apparent level. We've been designed to witness this, not omit it like the Catholic Church does. Remember, the Catholic Church's job is to ensure that you trust them for timekeeping. Scripture says something else. Trust in Yahuwah with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So again, are you being led by a beeb and or men and or women with the religious traditionalism? We'll do a video on this, Yahuwah willing, in regards to the timing, right down to the math, which people omit as well. It's very regrettable. So again, don't admit the very first page of Scripture. You don't have to. You don't have to act like a Nimrod. Why? Thus said Yahuwah from Jeremiah or Yirmiyahu, chapter 31, verse 35, who gives the sun for a light by day. And the laws of the moon, not the month, of the moon and the stars for a light by night who stirs up the sea and its waves roar. Yahuwah of hosts is his name. If these laws, the laws of the sun, moon, and stars, vanish from before Yahuwah, the father of lights, declares Yahuwah, then the seed of Israel, those who strive with the Almighty Yahuwah and his way, shall also cease from being a nation 
before me forever. And that has not happened, now has it? You do not have to act like a Nimrod or follow a Nimrod. Well, there's one more thing that is being omitted, and it's serious, and I'd like to spend a few moments on it. And it has everything to do with the etymological uh, scriptural word study on the word omit. Again, don't take away, don't omit from the word. And here's what it is. There are actual people out there saying, stop utilizing dictionaries, concordances, lexicons, don't study the evolution of what we now know as the al uh, alphabet. Don't learn the original letters of scripture or words. Don't study etymology. Don't study names. Furthermore, don't even study who wrote the scriptures and how the books came together. It's an excellent book by Richard Elliott Friedman. Don't do any of this. In fact, omit it. They're actually saying this. People that actually claim to be, um, you know, believers. Here's an actual Facebook or fake book quote. For the safety of those seeking Yahuwah, almighty creator of the heavens and earth, posts turning folks towards Strong's, Hebrew, will not be approved. <laughs> what? Even though these tools can help a little, it usually becomes people's mighty ones and authority of scripture and the Strong's hasn't shown desires to seek Yahuwah's salvation or are just interested in carnal-minded information. Okay, let's stop right there. They're dictionaries. They have no emotions. There are no thoughts. There are letters and words in history. It's etymology. It's a dictionary. Dictionary has no desire, but this is the carnal mind speaking now. And why does this type of mind do this like the Catholic Church? Well, this same very individual stated that they go to the secret place. And most people don't know the secret place, but they do. It's very dangerous. It's what's called the Nimrod approach or what we call the Yabba Dabba Do Hebrew movement. You don't have to be a Nimrod. And none of us were ever obligated to follow this Nimrod approach. Yahuwah is the author and all authority. Of course, everything else is at best a little tool, not the go-to. Yahuwah is the go-to. Filter everything through Yahuwah Ruaka. Ruaka, this again is the emotional, subjective approach. It's Ruach. There's no A at the end of Ruach. This same individual replaced the word Kadash, which means to be separated from the world, with Kadasha, which is a temple prostitute, because of their feelings and emotions, and they think they're better than others, because they and they alone can go to the secret place. Now, am I angry? No, I care for this individual. I care so much for this individual that they have been caught up in the same thinking of the Roman Catholic Church with their secret sanctum. And they want to be an envoy to all the nations. It doesn't work like that. We are to consider others better than ourselves. We are to come out of her. So when people start saying, you know, get rid of these tools, get rid of these books, there are, is another item that's coming up and they're saying that, you know, this comes from the internet. Well, wait a minute. A book is not from the internet. Now, books can be transferred to the internet digitally they are not even aware of that they don't even write properly the lack of intelligence here is enormous now we're not putting the individual down we are actually sharing that this individual is extremely presumptuous subjective and has a desire to rule over other people that's not our job the best we can do is work out our own deliverance Use all the tools available, yes, and allow Scripture to interpret Scripture. But this individual will not let it happen. Remember, many of you that were born and raised in Catholicism remember a, an editing company, a publisher, called Novelis. And in the Catholic Church, you are not allowed to read any books other than that were published from Novelis. 
This is called the Nimrod approach. It's censorship at best. It omits everything. It has the audacity to go on a public platform and tell you, you're not allowed to read this or that. I'll tell you what you're allowed to read. It is arrogance beyond measure. Think of it this way. In history, you all know about the Nazis and book burning. Whether an individual or a group of people want to rule over you, be careful. Be aware that this regrettably still exists and will exist even further in a much more aggressive manner in the future based on what Scripture is showing us. So again, what is the mystery of Yabba Dabba Do Hebrew? Yeah, it's those self proclaimed teachers that can be easily exposed who want to tickle your ears. They want to rule over you. They are the presumptuous ones. They ignore exegesis and they go into a full Sha'a or Sha'a approach. It's a Nimrod approach. It's cognitive bias. It's a just and disprove approach. It wants to rule over you. Again, we've created this proposed scriptural study format with the help of many Bereans over the years. It's very helpful to combat those things within your own life, let alone with other things that you may see. We cover this in the workshops. We have a couple coming up on the calendar with the count to Shavuot, which is two counts, seven Sabbaths, after the 16th day of the first month of Abib, and on the morrow, the day after the seventh Sabbath, you count 50 days. We're going to get into that in a big way. And some of these Yabba Dabba Do Hebrew movements and how to help them, um, even though they may not be requesting any help. But at the end of the day, um, stay close to the YouTube community page, and those dates will be coming to you uh, very soon. Yahoo are willing. So, why did the Catholic Church omit the full moon as new moon? It wants, it has intentions to change appointed times and law. It doesn't want you calling on Yahuwah, the Father of Lights. It doesn't want you crying out to the Father for your deliverance. So this is the point of these scriptural studies. And we're glad you're here because we want you to cry out to the Father for your deliverance. We want to personally, I want to personally cry out to the Father of Lights for my deliverance, Yahuwah himself, the only self-existent one. Why? Because it was the final teaching in the flesh that the firstborn of all creation, the Son, the Mashiach Yahushua. Yahushua means Yahuwah delivers, and it also comes with the connotation or meaning, cry out to Yahuwah for your deliverance. It's what Yahushua did in his final act in the flesh on the stake. He is our only teacher. He is the only one that came with his Father's words and does the Father's will fully and completely. So until next time, Yahuwah willing, we continue to hope that these scriptural studies provide value to you and your loved ones. So in closing, may Yahuwah continue to keep and guard each and every one of us. All the best in the name, which is above all names. See you soon.